Greetings, the Astro 30 here, yet again, working on this amplifier project, and I think we're up to part 5 now. And I've just received a package, and this video is going to be mostly um, related to the preamp. Uh, and I've got some parts here from Ultronics that I need to complete said uh, preamp. So I'm just going to open the bag, and we're going to have a look at what we've got. Well, we've got another bag and side of bag, which is nice. Um, so I love how Ultronics send their stuff in these padded bags, it's nice. Um, the reason I'm working on top of the laptop is because the amplifier is sitting off to my right on the desk. So there's not quite enough room over there. So they've sent me another one of their flyers um, for this month. Well, June, I assume. Um, I'll have a read of that later. It's not really important to me right now. I uh, got one four-way connector, one four-way plug, uh, two one point. 5 nanofarad capacitors, a 6 way connector, that's for something else. Um, I've got a 10k linear single gain pot with a very short shaft on it, which might be long enough without having to be cut down. I've got two 100k pots here, uh, sorry, two 10k linear dual gain pots. The shaft is not uh, completely chamfered all the way down which is kind of annoying but um, yeah I don't know how I'm going to solve that. But the reason I got these from Ultronics is because JCAR don't sell 10k linear dual gain pots. They sell 10k uh, logarithmic ones in the 16mm version for whatever reason. So yeah I've got that. Um, the six-way pin header, that's for something else. And uh, some 2.2 microfarad 50 volt bipolar capacitors and they're yellow, which is noise. And I've got a 100K linear potentiometer here with the same problem of the shaft isn't completely chamfered all the way down. However, I might be able to like before I solder these to the board, I might be able to just mount this um, with a G clamp or something to something and then I can just put a file on it and file it right down close to the connection point. That's a possibility. And I've got 10 of the pin headers that go with those said connectors, although I've already got a packet of connectors. Um, but I thought well, I'll get some extra pins because, you know, the likelihood of damaging one is pretty high. So, now we can move on to looking at the PCB. <coughs> and just like that, the PCBs for the preamp have arrived. It's actually the next day. And just for context, the last part of the video where I was doing that headphone adapter, the PCBs for that arrived yesterday. So, this is probably like now about two or three weeks later that this video part is ready, but <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to open the box and we'll take a quick look at the PCBs. And here they are. I'll just move the box to the side. And they are sexy as hell. Check them out. So, yeah, that's perfect. Um, it's roughly 35 millimeters between the base. Uh, treble and balance pots respectively and 45 between the balance and the volume just to keep that in mind. I also had an issue with routing when I was doing this. All the left hand side channel goes on the front of the pots here and the right on the back and then when it came to that it swapped around somehow so the left is up here and the right is down there. But it doesn't really particularly matter as long as the signal path from the left input makes it all the way to the left output, wherever that is. 
sorry the input's over here isn't it yeah let's try that again so that the signal path from the left input makes it all the way through to the left signal output that's all that matters um, as long as the balance is wired the correct way um, everything's box of birds so I'm not going to take much footage of doing this um, I'm just basically going to populate this board up of its resistors, capacitors and connectors and the IC sockets, ICs, etc. and um, leave the pots to last because uh, in the intro there I have to modify the shaft of those pass, uh, pots so that the chamfered side is all the way up to the end of the pot travel of the shaft because I don't know why it's designed like that but anyway I thought it was uh, like the J car ones, which was a completely chamfered shaft all the way up to the front of the pot, but it's not. So that'll be a task I'll have to do off camera. Um, over here I've noticed that my 10 microfarad capacitor, the output text of the connector is superimposed or sitting on top of the 10 microfarad, but you can still read it. I only noticed that in the um, CAD file the other day when I was just looking at something and realised, oh shit, I got text... Um, bleeding or text going over the top of text so I'll get to assembling that and um, when it's all assembled up to where the pots need to be installed I'll come back and we'll have a look um, it'll look much better populated and in the next part of this series of build videos I'm planning on hoping to drill the front panel and the last stage will be working on the input selector board which I haven't routed yet. I have routed the rotary switchboard to control it and that's on its way so I can at least drill the front panel um, with all the holes that are required, with all the components mounted to it so I don't have to take the panel back off to re-drill more holes. I can drill them all in one go is what I'm saying. So yeah, over here by the way there's an extra pad which is connected to ground which you can run a piece of tin copper wire across the top of the two, all four pots just to stop it from, from picking up noise from your, from your hand if you're touching it um, and also it grounds the front panel to the, the chassis so alright let's get to assembling well the preamp is assembled for the most part apart from the pots and I'm not using the tape out connector. I've decided to design the input selection board a little bit differently than Rod suggested uh, just because I can and I don't like the fact that the tape out is connected to all the inputs at the same time i.e. that when you select the tape input well the input from the tape deck is then going to come back out the output and if you've got it in record mode for instance you'll just get feedback. So I want to do something different with the switching on that but that's a topic for another video so now I have to deal with the potentiometers which is going to be my next challenge is trying to file the shafts down I already attempted to the other day by mounting that's the wrong end there we go by mounting it into say uh, a G clamp to the desk and it wasn't really very successful um, I need a vice so I'm going to buy one because I need it for other things too and then I'll try filing it down again because at least then the vise can grip the shaft at the end and I'm not worried about this end of the shaft being marred by the vise teeth because that's going to be cut off anyway shorter to accept the potentiometer knob so that's what I'm going to do and I'm probably going to cut the shaft down to the same length as the 10k pot that I've got the single gang which is 14 millimeters long, which is about that long, something like that where my fingernail is. So yeah, I'm going to do that and we'll get back in just a second. Well, that worked effectively. It's not perfectly flat, but it only has to have, to have like, you know, the chamfer up to the end of the pot, just enough to get the grub screw from the uh, potentiometer knob to grip to it without it spinning around. I might finish that off with a bit of sandpaper on the Dremel just to make it smoother. I ended up buying one of these cheap Craftrite vices that you can screw to the desk with a little thumb screw at the bottom there so it can be removed. Um, it's not the best. I bought this from Bunnings. As you can see the jaw goes at different angles when you're screwing it up. 
and unscrewing it, so it's not the best design. In fact, I was reading the comments from other customers that have bought this one before, like a couple of years ago, was uh, one of the comments, and it said, but as soon as he did this screw up, it snapped down here at the bottom. Now, that would have had to have taken a lot of force to snap the cast iron down here. Um, so you must have reefed the hell out of it to do it. Because, uh, yeah, well, it's only a small vice. I'm not going to be like, you know, pounding metal on it with a hammer or anything. So, anyway, it does the job for what it is. So now I have to do this twice more. Fun. It only takes about five minutes to file it down, so. I've got a bit of tape over the end of the pot here, so anything from filing is not going to get inside the thing and make it scratchy. So I have to use the edge of the file because, well, there's not enough room here. And I can safely say that um, that's not too bad. So, yeah, finish that off with a little bit of sandpaper and that should be fine. Okay, I've got to do that once more and then I can cut the shafts. I think. That is perfect. It's not perfectly flat, but it'll do the job. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. Yes, there was an extra 15 minutes of time involved to do that, but at least now all the shafts are the same length. So now I can solder them into the PCB, where they go, and um, test the preamp out. This is, this is becoming fun. Curse is always one. Well, that was a bit of boring video for you, but it's done. I put up quite a bit of heat in that pot. That one's come a bit loose. That's right. I've got to let things cool down. So I'm going to put the pots in the center and then I'm going to hook it up to the 
amplifier's power supply and um, then we can test it. Yes. Okay, I've got everything set up. I've already made the leads up a few days ago. Just make things a little bit quicker and more streamlined when filming. Um, now I've got the input hooked up to my oscillator off of the oscilloscope, uh, both channels, and I've got the two channels of the oscilloscope connected to the left and right uh, channels respectively. The yellow trace is my left channel and the blue trace is my right channel and the volts per division on both is set to 2.5 and we're in times one. So if I turn the power on, well not much happened, so I'll just give the volume pot a twiddle and there we go. We have an output and both channels are even and that's with the control max. And currently we're getting about 8.3 volt peak to peak out. That's good. So now I might change my generator type to a square wave and we'll test the operation of well, the base pot. That's doing something. Nice. Back to center. Treble. Nice, that's doing something. Cool. Alright, so treble full up, bass full up, turn the volume down a bit, and that's what we get. Isn't that special? Right, so I can see that those controls are doing something. So I'll just twiddle the balance. Now we're full right, and the trigger has gone off the scope obviously because we're triggering on channel one. Back to center and full left. So that control is operating as it should. Excellent. Right, I suppose the next thing to do is to hook it up to the power amplifiers, which is going to be a bit more of a challenge because I don't have any um, PCB headers connected to the ends of the wires here, but what I might do is I might just um, put the wire up against the terminal and then just use a jumper cable to hold it onto the terminal just for testing. Because um, these wires have got to be cut down to length anyway. So let me uh, set this up again. I'll just turn them off. Let me set this up again and uh, we'll continue testing. Okay, I got it uh, jerry-rigged into the power amplifiers. I'm just using two jumper leads to go to the connection points. So these may pick up a bit of noise. So I'll turn the amplifier on. It's still connected to the function generator. And immediately I do hear a bit of a buzz. So there's a bit of noise coming off of that uh, output preamp, but that's fine. And I can sort of hear the signal through the noise. There we go. That's fully right. It's fully left. That's the treble, which is not going to do much. So I'll kill that because that's annoying. Sounds like I'm swearing. Okay, let me hook this up to an audio source now and we'll have a bit of a listen. Right, I've got it hooked up to the computer. Um, so I'll just make sure I've got plenty of volume there. All right, uh, let's play a track.
from that um, buzz, which kind of is reminiscent of a TV, but that's only because, well, my output lead is sitting right above the toroidal transformer. So when I actually come to do the front panel, which will be the next uh, task and next video, I'm still waiting on the selector switchboard, um, I'll route the cables correctly and terminate them correctly and then test it again. So all we should really hear it's probably a slight hiss. It's not that loud um, of a buzz, but it's only because the speakers are right on the desk here, right next to my ears, it's going to have that sound to it. If they were across the room, it wouldn't be so bad. Um, but yeah, it works, and I'm quite pleased of how that turned out and that it worked first time without any issues, which is kind of unusual for me. Anyhow, I'll pop a link in the description to the article or project page, which is number two, on Rod Elliott's ESP website to that preamp. And uh, hopefully by the time this video is live, I would have made up the uh, shareable PCB um, article on PCB Way. So if you want to order the PCB, that link will also be in the description. Anyway, for now, I'm going to leave this video here and... As always, this is the Astro30 saying thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to go down below, comment, rate and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And this is the Astro30 saying I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Have a great day.